Hi, I'm Karen Gibbs, Creative Director for Banyan Batiks by Northcott. And uh, you're in for the love of batiks, a wonderful group um, that we created to talk about the batik processes and how you use batiks in your, your projects, your quilts, all of that kind of thing, where you find um, batiks. Um, so I want you guys to reach out and share some more. Um, I kind of feel like I'm the only one doing all the work here. So please let me know what you're working on uh, with your batiks. Um, generally, I like to talk about a certain process, you know, kind of pull the curtain back a little bit on the creation of the batiks uh, with Banyan. And um, today I wanted to focus on the chop, okay, and creating or designing for the chop. Because yes, I design batiks, right, on uh, the fabric that we use in quilting, but I have to take into consideration how the chop is used how it's created, um, the color applications, all of that kind of thing, because the chop is the vehicle that takes the wax to the fabric. Um, so when creating that, you have to think about that a little bit. And what is a chop? A chop is um, made out of copper, and it's got a handle on the back, right? And it's kind of a grid, if you look at it at the back, right? It's a little bit of a grid. And they take my drawing and then they put it on a grid and they put the little pieces of copper in each part of the grid. So they mold it into like a nice soft curve of a leaf or something like that, right? Um, if I'm doing a swirl or the motion of water, um, they've got to create that with um, metal, with copper. Um, we had a question um, that was posted, what happens to the chop when it's retired? Or is it uh, the copper reused? Is there a library somewhere? Um, all of the above, uh, <laughs> kind of. Um, when we do a chop, it's for generally for a one and done collection. In other words, we're gonna use it for a collection and then we're going to retire it. Um, so then you don't generally see it again unless maybe it's a very, very popular collection and I bring it back. Or maybe it's a popular um, uh, chop in particular and I, I bring it back or reuse it. Um, the factories do use the chops though for the local market. So sometimes when I'm in Bali, it's really fun to see uh, someone in a sarong and it's my design on the beach. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Um, the copper can be reused though. Uh, so that is that is something that, that can happen. All right, so this chop right here that I have, this is a little bit smaller of a chop. Generally, it's uh, 20 centimeters or about eight and a, a few um, inches. And that's a size. So you design everything to fit within that size or within that square or kind of square or triangle you'll see in a minute. Um, I'm obsessed with 60 degree triangles. This particular chop, uh, was created by, um, I guess, an intern or um, someone who's learning how to how to do it. And and generally, the artisans or the Tukon chop uh, makers, um, it's grandfathered in, right? Their family does it. They, um, it's it's quite an art form to just create these chops. All right. So this gentleman who did this was learning how to do it, and this is from my Boho Beach collection. And you can see if you look in here. The, the curves of maybe the uh, leaves are just a little rougher than, than something um, that one of the master artisans would have created, okay? It did get a little bit damaged in suitcases because I bring it around with me when I speak um, about batiks. But anyway, um, uh, this one we ended up rejecting actually because the way it um, adhered the wax to the fabric was not up to the quality standards that we like with Banyan. All right, so so it was remade again. Um, you can see some of the chops over here on the table um, are some by some of the master artisans. And you can see the difference kind of of how it's used. You can see the metal too is brighter here, right? Where it's darker here. This has been dipped in wax and used a lot more than uh, this particular one. It was only used uh, once uh, prior to sending it to me. All right, so when we're talking about chops, you can see right in here, this area right here is filled in, right? So when my sketch goes, it's filled in, I make sure it's colored in, and it's tiny little pieces of the copper in there. This area is not filled in. This area is partially filled in. So you have to start to think about all of those different things um, when you're creating the, 
the drawing, how much wax do you want on the fabric? The wax is going to hold that color down. Remember, the first color that's applied is actually the motif color. And then the wax, this is dipped in the wax, and the wax is applied to that color to hold the motif. So when you're thinking of your design, you start to think, okay, do I want um, it to be a heavy uh, design of a lot of color in the motif, or is the background more important to me showing through? Um, so when I'm doing this one, and also how thick do I want the line drawing, right? If I want a, maybe a two-point line or a three-point line or a four-point line, nice and thick line, something like that, you have to think about that when you're um, designing it. Of course, then there's the repeat. Do you want it to go side by side, or do you want it to go like a half drop, okay? Or maybe in a spiral or something like that. But when you start to get complicated with your repeat, and remember these um, artisans who are using this have to know how to repeat it. And then if it slows down production, then the cost goes up, okay? So all of these kinds of things you have to think about when you're designing for the chop, all right? Also, if I fill in a lot of space, that means a heavy amount of wax is there. Is it gonna pull too much and obliterate the design that I created? So I need to think about that because if I have a heavy amount, maybe in this flower right here, and then I have fine lines beyond it, what could happen is the wax could pull beyond the flower and then obliterate the light lines beyond that. So it, it really depends. Um, a lot of times when I bring in guest designers and I get to work with a lot of uh, talented guest designers, it's very difficult to explain the different processes um, because I have to look at it and say, okay, how much space is between those lines as well, right? because you got to make sure you have enough space so you ha you can see all of the detail in the lines all right so i thought it might be fun to look through some of the designs and um, let me talk you through the process this is for my painted leaves collection uh, banyan batiks okay it's in stores now look at this one right here what i was going for with this is kind of like um, a fossilized leaf right you can see I've got some where maybe it's not fossilized in here where it's a little more detailed. So I kind of got the, the line drawing of the leaf or uh, kind of the skeleton of the leaf. And maybe I decided in this leaf pile, this particular one hadn't fossilized yet. And I wanted that kind of look with this. The motifs are a little bit larger and then spread out a little bit. You can see the shape of the leaf here. It's a negative kind of shape, right? Behind it. So it's a lot of play. It's not a, just a flat two-dimensional. I wanted the look of a three-dimensional on that. But um, changing it up and making it so it's filled in here and maybe the negative space here, it kind of plays on it. It gives you a lot more to, dimension to look at. All right. Um, this one here is, again, different kinds of uh, leaves, but it's, it's almost like some are hiding underneath the others, right? Okay but it's larger motifs, all right? So when I get to smaller motifs, I have to be careful and make sure I don't put too much detail or it's not gonna show through. The wax isn't going to apply and hold the color, but I'm able to do that with dashes and dots there, and then I fill in the leaves there. And don't put so much detail in the uh, leaf branches on that one, okay? All right, and then uh, this is another leaf pile. Um, this one right here, you can see the leaves a little bit better because the motif is the black, right? So you can see it a little bit better. Now you also have to think about that. Okay, what, how am I going to color this? Um, if I'm doing more, uh, a stronger kind of motif with the color, do I need to make sure that I don't do it too heavy so I obliterate the background? Because the background is applied after um, the motif color. All right, this one is from my tile work collection and it's in stores now. Um, and you can see it's kind of offset, right? Now look at this right here. See how it's cracked, okay? And cracked right here. That's really one of the beauties of some of the batiks. If you color in this section right here, when they go to scrunch it up and add color, what happens is you get these nice fine lines or cracks um, from the natural process where um, the wax is holding on, but if it's cracking a little bit, 
um, then the color bleeds through. And I like to play that up. I think that's really interesting. This one is actually a double chop, right? So what's the first um, chop that I drew to apply is the cream right here, all right? So there's gonna be, if I do a lot of filled in sections there, there's gonna be a lot of cracking because I've gone through and I've applied first the, the color for the motif, then I apply the second color, um, which is the gray here, and then I apply the background. So there's a lot of scrunching and washing and all of that. And so I do expect it to crack a little bit and it kind of gives it a, a worn look, which I really love. Okay, here's some more with tile work. And you can see this, uh, lots of different things you gotta think about, right? Here's a stripe kind of effect. This one right here, we've got a lot of negative space. So how are you going to go ahead and repeat that, right? Um, to make uh, make sure you you get nice even uh, negative space on on that one. This one, we did a little bit of detail kind of in um, blocks, so you can fussy cut those out. And then I did I have another colorway here, but isn't that kind of interesting? You can fussy cut that out into a big block kind of quilt. Carnival. Uh, all about motion for Linda Hahn. She's a guest designer for Van Nuyen Batiks. It's all about motion. We want to keep everything moving. If you've met Linda, that's that's who she is. Um, so we did a lot of like wavy lines and interlocking kind of shapes. You can see here, um, kind of uh, instead of using just a line, we did almost like bricks in there, right? And then added some motion with the swirls. Uh, a little bit of organic with the leaves, not so much detail in that one, right? So I filled it in. So when I'm making, or when they're making the chop in Indonesia, this is the filled in section. So that's a lot of little pieces of the copper that are molded to fit um, the line drawing there. All right? All right, this one we featured into the deep. It's coming to store soon. Um, check out the Van Nuyen Batik product finder guide if you're interested in this one. This has a feel of water, right? Um, so we colored in this section, but look at that. See how that's a nice bigger piece of wax is what it is, or the motif, and then we've got a line around it. So you've got to make sure you have your background showing through there, right? Um, and so it doesn't, the wax when it's applied because it's liquid, does not obliterate that line. And this one shows it just a little bit more with the white and the blue. How many colors are in that background, do you think? I think I assigned at least three blue colors in that background, okay? That's a whole nother thing, color. <laughs> All right, this one is the border print. Remember, I, um, we showed you this uh, prior to earlier this morning on one of the posts. So I used two chops, but instead of layering them, right, um, as a double chop, like I referred to in tile work, I did on the border with one chop, it looks like the racing and you can do it so you're racing around the quilt. And then this type of thing, uh, the bike toss works really good for piecing, okay? So I did a double chop, but I didn't layer the colors. So when I went to do it, um, I had them do on the border, this chop, and then in the center, this chop. So this fits the selvage, this is the center, um, and it's only, it's the one color green, right? Normally with the double chop, we're doing more and more color processes. This one, we're only doing the one color process for the motif and the one color process for the background. Okay. All right. So Victorian Contemporary. Um, let's spend a little time on this collection. This one's coming to stores very, very soon. And you can see, remember I was talking about the big motifs? Okay, so what we did again is a double chop kind of motif. So this motif and this one next to each other, okay? And what was applied first? This color in the motif was applied first. And then the chop held that color down, all right? So it's a bigger, bigger motif there, right? And you can see it a little bit easier here. And this one is more defined. And um, as a batik lover, we kind of call this one maybe a modern batik, right? And why is that? Because this right here has more of a dip dye look or a solid the same way, okay? Um, it holds the color right there and then the background is applied after. And sometimes you do, because of the larger motif, get a little bit of that cracking action, which is pretty cool, okay? 
Um, here it is, and that looks totally different than the, uh, the past one, right? And we did a lot of color in the first before we put the wax down in the motif, and then we did a lot of different colors in the background. And this just speaks to the spring season. Are you guys ready for spring and summer? I sure am. But this is Victorian contemporary. Now, to offset that, because I've got that strong um, coloration in the motif, to offset that, what I wanted to do is almost a line drawing. Something a little bit different um, that was more, okay, so the background's coming through, the line is the motif. So we're just doing lines of the copper in the chops, right? And this one here, you can see, is dots. I have a thing for dots, don't I? <laughs> Um, you, you've got dots there and then again the line so it's just lines of copper holding it and as it um, if you get nice and thin in your lines you can see there's a little bit of cracking on there which showcases uh, the batik process okay all right and stardust you guys have seen a lot of stardust lately it's in stores and by the way if you're in the mood for a shop hop on the east coast go to the main shop hop uh, they have a free downloadable pattern for their shop hop, which I wrote, and um, it's showcasing all of the Stardust collection, so make sure you check that out, okay? Um, we've got some of the chops here. This one right here makes this particular one, okay? And you can see we've got filled in areas right there, and then you've got dots right here, which is really kind of cool. This one is more of a wheat kind of feel right and I've sketched this and we filmed it while I, while I sketched it and showed how it made the chop over there and then the fabric right there okay so it's thicker pieces of copper together to form that all right and that is uh, the Stardust collection we've got sugar crystals here now this is all about color right we've got tons of different pretty soft um, springy colors on the wall here this particular chop is coming um it just stores are seeing it right now it's from the collection la vie en rose and that's the eiffel tower and then i've done a double chop application of it but that chop's like this big it's amazing okay and then we got some carnival up there and more sugar crystals um, but the chop creation is the vehicle that takes the chop is the vehicle that takes the wax to the fabric to hold that color and that's where the designs come from okay so make sure you uh, check out your batiks in your local quilt shop let me know if you have any questions and make sure to post them because we do a drawing every single week and send out a fat quarter bundle um, so make sure you post your questions and I'll make sure to shout out to you and give you a quick answer. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm Karen Gibbs. I'm the creative director for Banyan Batiks.